Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 404. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today is June 8th, 2018. Oh, welcome to another episode, George. Uh, your daughters are still traveling? One is now in Calcutta. Uh-huh. The other has home in Gainesville. Huh. And uh, today is our 33rd anniversary, my wife and I. Well, congratulations. We yeah, got cause... married about two weeks after we finished college, uh-huh. uh, graduated, so we were 21 or 22, something uh-huh. like that. Well, you're growing older gracefully. You're empty nesters. Benefits, benefits, benefits. Uh, um, we're waiting for Ben to move out, but Michaela moved out this week. She got an oh, apartment. She took that noisy dog. You've heard him before. The guy who clicks when he walks through the hardwood floors here. He's gone. Oh, the guy who, the dog who barks every time the UPS driver comes by. That dog is gone. <laughs> Poof. Gone. So um, when are your parents moving into the empty bedroom? Yeah, there's that. <laughs> 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 Won't be long before I'm hosting mom and dad. Uh, cool. So we should move on here to some news. Um, this is a hard one because part of uh, growing up in the church, the, the church university, the, the one uh, Catholic United Church, is watching martyrs and watching throughout time uh, the bishops and archbishops and clergy stand up to uh, protest what's happening to Christians around the world. And as an Episcopalian and now uh, an active person, I've watched the Church of England fail at this miserably. I can't think of one time ever that the Church of England has stood up uh, for a, a persecuted Christian around the world, um, whether it's in Korea, China, North Korea, or China. And just this week, we got news that uh, Canon Andrew White was exonerated by the police. They couldn't find anything. They didn't want to charge him. Uh, he was ch- initially charged for uh, misusing uh, donated funds to uh, buy off uh, sex trafficked uh, people from ISIS. But uh, he found, well, not found innocent, but not charged. And I remember right before all this happened, Ken Andrew White, uh, the vicar of Baghdad, was celebrated by the Church of England. Uh, Justin Welby would have him up to the palace. Come on, you know, we love the work you're doing with Baghdad and Iraq and all that. But once he was charged, poof, nothing. You know, not we support him, not we hope he's doing better, not that we hope the best for him. Um, but, you know, the Church of England goes silent. And I don't understand that, George. Well, the case with Andrew White uh, is, in, is in many ways instructive. Uh, Andrew White uh, was the uh, vicar of Baghdad for many years uh, during the uh, Iraq War, after the Iraq Wars and the Reconstruction, a leading figure in relations with the Muslim and Jewish world. And he had uh, charitable entities uh, that he would use, Fellowship of Reconciliation in the Middle East. Um, And then a charge was made that he was using this money he was, the charge was that he was sending money to ISIS. Mm-hmm. And, and then because somebody said that he was paying ransom for captives, sex slaves, trying to free people. And White denied this. But when this happened, the charity that he organized and ran got rid of him. And the Church of England dumped him. And after an t- exhaustive police, uh, police investigation and the, chari- and the charity commission, investigation was he misusing money he has been exonerated cleared it's not true and the church of england has this desire to eat its own i mean george bell bishop george bell was one of the great the one of the leading moral figures of the church of england in the 20th century and justin welby has been rubbishing him with uh Uh, winks and nods and accusations of misconduct. He's been cleared and all this and that. But uh, the Church of England, you know, tried to destroy George Bell. It's uh, tried to destroy, it's uh, closed its eyes and walked away from Andrew White. Um, 
Well, when there's an, I mean, well, it closed could, its eyes and walked away from Gavin Ashenden. Sure. When well, Gavin stood up for the faith when he was a Queen's chaplain, and basically the, the the Church of England could have said, well, you know, Jesus is Lord, not Allah, Muhammad. And no, the Church of England decided not to get involved, and the rest is history. Well, I just, you know, we just read about Michael Curry getting involved in the Colorado uh, Supreme Court issue. Uh, in my opinion, taking the wrong side. Uh, does nobody ever support the Christian anymore? Well, if they're in the Church of England, the answer is no. <laughs> except, here's the joke of it, except they do support Christians. Jeremy Pemberton, who many of you may remember the story that we've reported on, he was a uh, gay priest, he got married, and that violated Church of England laws, and then when he wanted to take up a new job, the new bishop, Bishop of Southwell and Nottingham said, no, I'm not going to give you a license because you're violating church rules by having a same-sex marriage, living this marriage. Because we only allow uh, civil partnerships, and then you have to be chased. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Well, uh, Pemberton sued in an employment tribunal, and he lost. And then he took it to the employment tribunal tribu uh, appeals board, and he lost. And then he took it to the Court of Appeals in London, and he lost. Now, Pemberton's... That's, that's not cheap. No, Pemberton's had his legal fees paid by somebody, an organization, we don't know who, but gay act, gay supporters have underwritten Pemberton's cost. Well, the Church of England defeated Pemberton across the board at each level and are entitled to costs for defending themselves from this frivolous lawsuit. And they announced in Parliament, of all places, that they're not going to seek costs from Jeremy Pemberton. So... They'll walk away from, they'll, they'll kick George Bell after he's been dead for 50 plus years. They'll walk away from Andrew White. They'll basically vilify Gavin Ashen. But they'll, uh, well, we don't want to uh, be mean to Jeremy Pemberton and make him repay the money he forced us to spend on a frivolous lawsuit. <sighs> what, does it, what does it tell you about an organization that its ethos is such? I have too much middle management is what it tells me. Um, let's transition a little bit uh, to the, the days of yesteryear. I don't know if you, yeah, I know you do because you're a reporter at the time, but 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when there was strife within the church, like the Episcopal Church causing uh, problems or the Anglican Church in uh, Canada uh, causing problems, uh, the primates would respond. They would write either individually or together, put together a communique or a letter saying, stop, don't do this, giving all the reasons, well-researched, well-documented, uh, and boom, it was published and it would go around the world. You'd see it in the blogs, you'd see it on uh, Anglican forums and Anglican news services. There was a great day when uh, the leaders of the church would respond to areas of crisis within the church. Now, for many reasons, social networks, um, they just don't have time because they're dealing with uh, internal issues in their nations. You don't see massive responses from the primates anymore when there's trouble in the church. However, there's a new person in town uh, who's doing just fine, and his name is Miguel Ochoa, and he seems to be answering, at least he and his organization, um, almost immediately when there's problems, George. I'm encouraged. Miguel, the ACNA bishops could learn a thing or two about communications and public media presence from Miguel Ochoa. He is a bishop. He's the Archbishop of the Anglican Church Brazil, Bishop of Recife, and the Episcopal Church Brazil. Last uh, earlier this month, uh, endorsed gay marriage, and in their statement, it was really wild. It said, "The Holy Spirit has caused us to do this. Don't blame us. It's the Holy Spirit." We'll have no choice. Well. Miguel Ochoa, a uh, little insider baseball here. We ran the story. We Actually, we just ran the press release from the Episcopal Church Brazil. And it went out on Anglican Inc. and on Twitter and everything. Uh, even on Wikipedia, uh, they put in our story. And then the primate of Southeast Asia, Moon Hing, uh, mm -hmm. Archbishop oh. Moon, Moon, yep. Moon ret retweeted our story. But he changed the head, he put it in his own comment about uh, words to the effect, bad news from the Anglican Church Brazil, when it's the Anglican Episcopal Church Brazil, technically. 
And Recife jumped all over that. And they said, no, we're the Anglican Church of Brazil. They're the Episcopal Church of Brazil. And here's where we stand. And Miguel Ochoa released a remarkably concise statement of beliefs and principles uh, and basically won the PR battle. Oh, it did. Historically accurate, going back to the beginning. You know, I, I love that a lot. And so wh why, why I raise that is that, you know, first off, nobody re at this point, nobody really, you know, Scotland's gone gay, the Episcopal Church is gone gay, Brazil, the blah, 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 blah. Now, nobody writes or responds or cares anymore. But Miguel Ochoa surprised us pleasantly by the strength and the the depth and the integrity of his response. Mm -hmm. So there's a new sheriff in town, and there's a new... <laughs> in other words, the ACNA has... Uh, I'm sorry, GAFCON has had some remarkable leaders. Uh, my favorites uh, have been uh, Peter Akinola and Henry Arambe. I believe those men, uh, I'm not seeking to diminish anyone else, but they were really the sorts of people who could lead an international movement and get everybody on board and speak cogently and powerfully. Bob Duncan was the right man at the right time when the ACNA was formed. He really was the point man. Now, for this new crop of leaders, I think Miguel, we need to watch out for Miguel Ochoa. I really do think that you're going to see something from him in the future on an international stage. Yeah, it's interesting to watch because I long for the days of old when, when there was an outcry, the outcry came from the primates from the bishops, uh, from the clergy. Now something drastic happens in the Episcopal Church or uh, North in Canada, and you don't hear anything. Well, you, you hear Gavin, uh, but... <laughs> you hear Gavin, yourself and, and myself, but that's it. You no, know, and about once every three to six months, we'll get a GAFCON statement, or Nicholas uh, Oko will, in his monthly letter, say, is this terrible? But the they've we've lost... The, the the conservative leadership has lost the immediacy and urgency that they once had and the spread and depth of their responses to the crises going on. Yeah. And it's a PR, it's not, it's a, yes, it's a theological problem, but it's also a PR and administrative problem. They're not tactically responding as effectively as they could. But in those responses, we have phrases that carry on today, 10 years later. This is a tear in the fabric of the communion. Who said that? Drexel Gomez. Yeah, that's right. That's lasted 10 years. I mean, that's a, a statement that go, will, will be... 15, 2003. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Gene Robinson. that long? Oh, man, I'm getting old. Um, so, you know, th these are s statements and phrases that are in the lexicon and the history of the church. It's time for a reformation. It's time to correct broken branches of our church. And these were put into documents that will uh, live in the, the blogosphere forever. George, you got your bags packed? Got my bags packed. Mm -hmm. uh, I found my uh, wattage converters mm -hmm. for all my little appliances. Good, good, good. Uh, the, the biggest question I have, and I'm going to write down here, P-A-S-S-P-O-R-T. No, we had a rodeo, not a Honda Passport. <laughs> no, oh, you, no. oh, you mean, have I found my passport? Had, have you found the passport that prevented you from going to England with me last time? Well, Susan uh, put it in a safe place. Good. And well, no, she had it last time. <laughs> she had it in her briefcase. <laughs> with so. her law license and uh, <laughs> other things like that. No, we found the passport. Good. We're getting our bags packed. Mm -hmm. I've gotten all my shots. and. Oh, good, good. Yeah, boy, geez. But, Filling up on ham sandwiches because uh -huh. that's going to be a little lacking in Jerusalem. No, I live no. on yeah, and that's the thing. You know, when we show up as, in journalism, our day is not just hanging out in the press room, which is fun. Um, but we, we go and uh, do our thing. Now, in the past, my responsibility was always to broadcast and live stream and do camera footage of the event and the speakers that ha as it happens. <sighs> Through the graciousness of GAFCON. Uh, I don't have to do that anymore. They're going to pay a team to uh, do that. Uh, I get to go around with my camera, do interviews and stuff like that, um, which will probably be more beneficial to you know, our audience. Uh, you will be heading up our editorial team for Anglican.inc. Uh, what are the best types of stories to post? 
when or what? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's it's advantageous because we'll be about uh, seven hours ahead. Uh, and when people come online in mid at mid morning, mid afternoon, they'll have the day's work done. So we'll basically uh, be it. They'll basically all. It's a good way to do it. Uh, second, the stories that are going to happen. Well, we don't know. I don't know how to answer that, Kevin. Because <laughs> well, I, I it, think that the, 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 the nine the, the nine networks is going to be interesting. You know, it, they're, they're taking up. <laughs> a, a, I think they're taking more of a formulary, uh, you know, we saw them launch the ACNA here in America, did really well. We saw that, you know, what they can do, we, and we've seen some growing pains. I think uh, that England is a growing pain for them. No. Kevin, I won't, I won't, I won't follow you there. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. Where, in other words, the, what the organizers hope will be news. Mm-hmm is seldom news. That's true. In other words, something somebody will say something or do something or an, or the meeting will form a life of its own. And that and part of the job of being on site is that you as a reporter you're able to pick up where the currents are taking things. So that something that I mean I remember Lambeth 1998 before the conference I was writing these stories saying Youth ministry is the focus of the communion right now. That's really going to be the big story out of this conference. Well, guess what? They had all their youth things, and I cover them, and nobody cared. Mm -hmm. What do they care about? Human sexuality. Now, uh, nine networks, that's all nice and good, but I just can't see people getting up early to see the latest. <laughs> I don't think it'll be the news driver, but I think uh, as far as the the internals of GAFCON, I think it'll be beneficial. No, I agree with you there. Um, and and the other, the other thing I think that we need to point out is that GAFCON is a living organization. It's, a, it's composed of individuals, mm -hmm. and there's a leadership vacuum right now. Uh, we've got new crops of primates coming up. Um, we've got who is going to step out? And sort of be that public face, uh, that public voice uh, that we've had in the past. Don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what primates are going to be there, and not going to be there. Uh, what guests will be there and uh, not be there. Uh, I think the rumor is Tanzania is not going to be there. Um, but we have obviously uh, people from Brazil going to be there, so that'd be kind of cool. All right, George. This is the most important part of the show. We need people to like. We know you like us. I mean, you just, you, you clicked on, and either you, you're listening to us in the background or you're watching intensely for our facial reactions to the stories we're doing. You, you like us, so just click like on the button. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have not subscribed yet, uh, I, I've been getting still some emails. I have not gotten your email about the new show in months. Well, we're not doing that anymore because Gmail, Yahoo, and everybody else blacklisted our, our email program. It's just not worth it. Subscribe. Click that little red button on the YouTube channel, and you will get all the Anglican TV uh, videos sent to your inbox as they occur. Share. Don't be selfish. You can share this program. You might be embarrassed, but you can just say, listen, I saw this crap on the Internet, and you should see it too. You, know, you don't have to say you like it to the people you share it with. Oh, most important one. We're taking three people to GAFCON. GAFCON. We're taking Gavin, George, myself. Uh, it's expensive. We rented an Airbnb across the street. We're flying people there. We're bussing people there. And then, <clears throat> in case you haven't noticed, we are not really good at dieting, so I have to feed them as well. So if you could donate, go to anglican.tv forward slash donate. And uh, give what you can. You're either buying chips, diet soda, or plane ticket. We really appreciate it. George, uh, is this our last show before GAFCON? Or do you want to do one more next week? Well, we'll see what it about rises. Yeah, I know. All right. You know, I just thought of something. I don't know where my passport is. Oh, well. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Congren. You've been watching episode 404 of Anglican Unscripted.